<laughs> Anyways, so so I just want to say that um, Ashley, hang on, she has um, been working with me. She just started working with me, and it's like such an amazing, you know, um, partnership to have your daughter to be able to work with your daughter. It's so amazing, and she's brought so much to this company. So thank you so much, Ashley. All these wonderful recipes tonight are from Ashley. I hope you all get your recipe. Thank you. Thank you so much. I hope, I hope you all get your recipe cards, you know, that she put out. Um, and then um, also she'll be putting out, we'll be putting out other recipes too, which will be really great. And, um, and, you, and you all got to try. Hope, anybody who wants to try, like, some of our new stuff, our brain chai latte or the brain berry boost, please let us know. The girls will help you and stuff too. Yeah, so. Okay, anyways. So I just want to explain for one quick second. T tonight is our From Roots to Wings um, kick off, New Year's kickoff for Simply Young. And it really means a lot. And, and this was something that um, Ashley and French, Francisco, who you, if you've seen him around and around, he's, he's just such a quiet soul, but he's such an amazing, amazing, amazingly gifted person. He's such a big part. Let's all give Francisco a big hand for the beautiful work he's done on our new labels and all the work he's done. He created this beautiful logo here. It's it's not really our logo, but what it is, it's really talking about the roots, you know, that we are, all, every bit of these products come from, they, they have roots, they have beautiful roots, and um, every ingredient truly does count. If you all want to come sit down, you guys can come come join us here. Um, and so, and and, and also the, the fact that when you get the correct nourishment that you need, the nutrition you need, all of a sudden you just see that all of a sudden you can fly. I've seen you all blooming in so many ways. It's so incredible. I, it's, you know, I mean, we could have a million testimonies, not a million, probably 10 really good te testimonies here. <laughs> that was a little exaggeration. <laughs> Anyways, but it's really awesome because, um, <laughs> okay, okay. Anyways, but um, so that's what our, our little logo thing was, our roots from to wings thing. And um, so tonight we are so excited because we have Ashley who's going to be singing a, a song tonight. And it's really in your honor because truly each and every one of you are so absolutely beautiful. She's going to be singing beautiful. So come on up, Ash. <laughs> evening guys <laughs> and if I take a seat and brush myself a little bit we can't see yeah it has to stay up this has to stay up yeah it does okay yeah <laughs> oh no no okay <laughs> no blackmailing <laughs> okay Chicharito why is this not working okay you start up I don't know how to do that. I'm not quite sure where that's at. There we go. Okay. okay. I think that might do it. Yeah. Uh, three next. Three next. And then it'll do it. Maybe. I would just hate to have it start and then not be in the right place, you know? So. There we go. <laughs> Don't you bring me down, 
Simon Cowell when you need him, right? <laughs> okay. Anyways, thank you all so much for coming tonight. I wanted to, um, you know, just really um, acknowledge just what Simply Young really is, because some of you guys don't know, some of you guys are new here, but we are, um, Simply Young really has an amazing mission. We're an evidence-based longevity products company that supports youth from the inside out. You know, we're up against a lot of uh, crazy stuff right now. You know, a lot of people are having lots and lots of health challenges. You know, I mean, we're talking about the brain tonight, and the brain is everything. If, it, if you don't take care of that, you're in serious trouble. <laughs> you know, so this truly is, is an amazing foundational um, topic that we really have to look at because we're looking at almost 80 million baby boomers, and we're, we're looking at this onset you know, dementia that's happening and younger and younger. That is like from 45 to 65. That's insane. You know, and um, I, I see it all around me. I see it in people and it's heartbreaking. And, and we don't, we don't even realize that, that this, these brain issues are so much bigger. There's so many other avenues in it and who else but to bring in the top in the country, truly the country to be able to share tonight this amazing information of what is truly happening with this. Um, um, also, I wanted to also just, uh, we before we get started, because I know we're going to just totally want to be going into everything about the brain tonight and everything. I, we do have a couple of products in the spotlight tonight that I want to share with you. We have um, our mag magtabolized capsules. You know, we've got serious issues happening with I mean, almost – 80 to maybe 90% of the population having serious magnesium deficiencies. 
you know, and I always share symptoms of, you know, the twitching, the, the arrhythmias, the many different symptoms that, you know, I mean, this is not something we need to take, we can take lightly because um, it's a very serious issue. And then we also have massive thyroid cancers and thyroid issues in young girls and, and young kids that we're seeing right now and across the spectrum. And I really felt strongly that we needed to bring out a, pro a product, with, but I couldn't get this one to taste good. <laughs> so <laughs> it's in a can of veggie cap. <laughs> Anyways, but it's called Magtabolize, and it's amazing for your metabolism, which is great. Um, but it's full of iodine and uh, magnesium-rich foods. So that's a really great product. Then um, for those who's doing a cleanse right now, anybody who's doing a cleanse? Right on. It's so great. Well, the cleanse has been a really big hit, and it's definitely one of our most popular products for sure. And uh, But we, we now put in the container of the um, coffee with the minerals and the essential oils and everything, the coffee enema is now in there, so you get a seven-day supply, which is great in the cleanse. Plus, um, we also have another enema, which for a lot of people who are new, you might want to suggest this for. It's the, the Pure Body Lemon Aloe Enema. And why that's so important. I don't know if you're talking about enemas. <laughs> I remember I was out with, with uh, who was it? Hey, Daryl Hannah once, we were having lunch, and we were talking all about our bowel movements. <laughs> and she goes, you're the only one I can talk to about this. <laughs> I go, do you mind if I quote you on this one? And she goes, it's okay. <laughs> Anyways, but it's really true because it's all about that. You know, the heart of most disease is nutritional deficiencies, systemic toxins, inactivity, and stress. And probably a few other things, but truly, you know, it, it's this deficiencies that are really causing a lot of problems and the mass of toxins that are in the body. So it's a very real issue. If you don't get things cleaned out, it's going to be hard to get the real nutrition in. But with our stuff, because most of it's drinks, it's a lot easier, isn't it? It's really amazing, right? So um, that's the lemon aloe cleanse. Now, that's a cleansing enema. That's something that goes in, cleans things out, goes right out. The, the coffee enema is a retention enema that would, would be held in. And if you can hold it for like up to 15 minutes, research is showing it's like doing dialysis five times. So anybody who has kidney challenges, seriously, this is a, a, it's really amazing. Um, and then um, the other two products in Spotlight, I think you all got to try, I hope you did anyways, uh, was our brain chai latte. Who loves the brain chai latte? Say it, yes! <laughs> Woo, it was so awesome, right? I mean, you can do that hot or cold or warm and cold. You can make like a frappe with it, like a kind of a whippy thing, you know, whatever that is, uh, whatever you want to make of it. And then, um, of course, the, the, you know, having it in for, five, for four days before I got out the brain berry sh uh, uh, boost, booster, which is two scoops, um, I thought that my, I might have been getting worse because I started getting a little foggy like for the first day when I first started taking the bright brain chai latte, but I had a lot of neurological problems when I, with the Lyme disease. And I, I was thinking something's going on here. I want to, I'm like, what is it? You know, obviously sometimes you get worse before you get better and cleansing, of course. So I was like, okay, I'm going with this. Um, the next day I was so clear and it was like so clear out and everything. But by the fourth day, my eyesight was noticeably better. And I really have no doubt because, you know, I've had such serious li um, liver issues with my blood disease, my genetic blood disorder, and my uh, Lyme disease. So I could really see a difference before I even had the other one the, with all the organic blueberries and everything. So it really, it, there's something so special about both of these drinks. And because it makes it so easy to have it in such a great lifestyle way, it's, it's phenomenal, right? I mean... You can see yourself, I mean, when you look at the coffee industry alone, and this has no coffee or tea in it, it has no stimulants, no, I mean, no, no bad stimulants, I should say, and no chemicals, we don't do any chemicals, we don't do pesticides, herbicides, no GMOs, no um, um, any kind of bad excipients, binders, fillers, anything like that, which is really amazing, and every, it's where, this is a company where every single ingredient counts, and you can count on that, truly. You can really count on it. <laughs> That's so awesome. Anyways, um, so I wanted to um, introduce Dr. Hyla Cass. And, you know, D Hyla, I have to say, she's so awesome. We are like, we're like sisters. We'll go to conferences and people say, are you related to Hyla? Or sometimes they think I'm Hyla. 
It's the funniest thing ever, really, right? So we have become sisters because of that. And it's like, I just love Hila so much. Really, you're just such an amazing person. And and she's like does she's like the rock star of doctors at the shows. Seriously. Like people love her. She's such an amazing, um, really wise, really knows her stuff really well, better than anybody in the industry. And we are so, so lucky to have her here. Seriously. Um, she's a board certified in psychiatry and neurology. Um, as well as integrative and holistic medicine. Wow, right? She's a nationally recognized expert and educator. She's appeared, you're going to love this. Who does not like the Dr. Oz show? Come on, come on, you do, you know. Um, she, she's been on Dr. Oz. She's been on The View. Many radio shows. She's the author of several popular books, including Natural Highs, The Addicted Brain, and How to Break Free, and Eight Weeks to Vibrant Health. She also has developed specialized nutritional supplements for enhancing mind, mood, and energy. So let's all welcome Dr. Hyla Cass. I'm gonna pull up her little thing here real quick here. There's the final. Slide show. What? There's no video, right? We're not being videotaped. We are being oh, yeah, videotaped. It's on go to meeting here. It's right here. Let me... Oh, okay. Yeah, it's recording right now. So, smile. <laughs> and sometimes that might come on when people pop on and off. There's no camera there. Okay. Okay, there we go. And then you can just, um, I don't, yeah. You sure? I don't What's that? The camera's thing on. The camera's not on there, no. Oh. Okay, there you go. And you're good to go. And then there's it. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Thanks, honey. Thank you, you so it. much. I love you, I and I love what you're doing, and you're always on the cutting edge of nutrition, do it, creating beautiful, clean, healthy, wonderful things. So thank you, thank you. So um, we need more of you and more of what you do. And what I appreciate is the purity of your products. And anything you've ever done, you're always going for the highest quality. And that's so important because in the supplement business, because I have – develop supplements as well, you have to be able to track them right from the get-go, right from the seeds and the soil. You can't just go to a manufacturer and say, give me this, 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 and put them in a, in a thing for me, in a powder or in a capsule. You have to actually track them and know where every single ingredient is coming from, how it's processed, because so much stuff can sneak in. And it's uh, you have to be ever vigilant, and I know that Katie is. So I appreciate that. Thank you. And I'm going to talk to you about the brain. So uh, because that, that is actually my specialty, and the brain is connected to the rest of the body, so you'll hear about the rest of the body as well. Now, I don't have a timer here, so I'm going to actually take out my... Um, oh, you want to do that? Or? If you pass me my purse, I have my cell phone there, and I'll have... Oh, that'll give me a timer. Otherwise, I'll just keep talking. I mean, you just won't be able to get rid of me. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, yeah. Yeah, because there's an, an actual timer on the uh, thing. Okay, so uh, this was my bio. You already went over that. Uh, I do a lot of writing, speaking, teaching, wherever I can to get the word out about natural medicine. And I'll be talking about that some more. Uh, what, what are we seeing? What are we seeing with the health concerns? We're all seeing this. You don't have to be a doctor yeah, to see it. Stressed. I'm stressed. I'm nervous and irritable. This is what, what I hear in the office. I'm so depressed. I'm so tired. I can't sleep. I can't lose weight. I forgot where I, for, I forgot where I left my keys. I forgot my best friend's name when I went to introduce her. You know, you know, all of these things that you hear your friends saying sometimes happen to you. Um, and I certainly hear this in my practice. So what's going on? I mean, is there an epidemic of mental illness? I mean, we, we're having a way big increase in autism and ADHD in suicide and schizophrenia, bipolar illness, violence, depression, and Alzheimer's disease. And this is, this, this is based on World Health Organization statistics. And actually, mental health problems are becoming the number one problem in the 21st century. 
one in 10 people at one time in their life or rather it's going to be suffering from a mental illness and um and one in four people are suffering at what at some point as well so did i say the same thing twice at some point in the, and at any one point one in ten people are, have some sort of a mental issue so what are the top mental problems ADD, ADHD, we tend to see this in, young, in younger kids, but we, it really continues into adulthood. We just hide it better because we're not sitting in the classroom. Dyslexia and dyspraxia, that is dyslexia is when you reverse letters, you can't read properly. So you're not stupid, you just don't read right, you don't, your perception is off. But dyspraxia is uh, clumsiness. Um, autism, way big. Ter terrible, serious problem. Depression, bipolar illness, manic depression, anxiety, insomnia, schizophrenia, um, arteriosclerotic mental illness, and dementia, and Alzheimer's disease, and all kinds of things like you. And we're hearing more about this, like ALS, MS, and Parkinson's. So, what's going on? Why are we all going crazy? What's why are we becoming demented? Is is this a, like a Redland deficiency or a Prozac deficiency? Like, what is it? And the real truth is, and I know this as a physician, it doesn't really matter what the label is, whether it's called depression, whether it's Alzheimer's, ADD, it's all a disease of your whole system. And it's not just in your brain. It's really in your whole body and your whole uh, chemistry. And there are a lot of causes for this and everybody's different. There isn't that just a single, see, we're not going to find a single cause because it's multifactorial. Genetics is really important, but we don't have to live out our genetics. We know that. We know that we, there's epigenetics. So we have a we have a genetic predisposition. Can you explain epigenetics a little bit? Okay, genetics is the, the predisposition that we have. It's our hardware. That's what we're programmed for. Then there's epigenetics, which means that it's not your destiny. What you eat, your lifestyle, the nutrients you take in. Um, even your thoughts are going to change how your genes are actually expressed. So you can have twins reared apart and they'll have different lit lifestyles and they will be different. You say, well, how can that be? They're, they're identical twins with the same genes because it's not your genes that really decide everything. They're just the predisposition and you could do a whole lot about it. A lot of people now are in families where you know, their fathers, their brothers, their uncles, everybody died by 50 of a heart attack, and yet at 70 they're still going strong. Why? Because they're eating right, they're exercising, they're taking supplements, they're really taking care of themselves. So they're not going to drop dead like their father and their grandfather and their uncles and everyone else. So that's, that's the difference. And some of the other issues we have are toxic environment. So it's not just the genes or the epigenetics, but the toxic environment is really affecting us. We're chemicals, EMFs. So the toxins that we don't even see, our lifestyle, sedentary lifestyle, stress, poor sleep. And, you know, a lot of people are sleeping poorly because of stress or also because of the EMFs. It's a real, everything influences everything else. Wi-Fi. Yeah, the EMFs are coming from Wi-Fi, from, from our phones, uh, from all the things that we don't see, all that invisible energy really does affect us. And in fact, you should sleep. I mean, I could, I could take uh, each point here and do a whole lecture on it. So, and I won't. So also all kinds of inf inflammation, all kinds of inflammatory illness. Are you, aren't we ever seeing that? A lot of people with rheumatoid arthritis, with autoimmune disease, we're seeing lots of that because of how we're eating, what we're eating, and what we're exposed to. We have hormone imbalances, thyroid, adrenal, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, these all go down with age, um, and as they go down, we're also not as well defended against a lot of the conditions that we don't get when we're younger because we have higher levels of hormones. And our diets are terrible, full of toxins, full of GMOs. I'm talking about the standard diet, full of processed chemicals. We, so we can't do this. I mean, this is where we have to really make a big shift. And this is what I do. This is what I do in my work, and that is how do we figure out what's going on what's wrong with the brain, and what to do about it. How to intervene with diet, lifestyle, and supplements, and to, to really become your best self. It's not about let's get rid of the symptoms, because that's what 
regular medicine does. It's, let's get rid of the symptom. You take a pill, you'll be feel. You have a headache, take a pill. No, you have a headache, you find out, well, why do you have a headache? Is it a toxic headache? Is it something that needs a chiropractic adjustment? You know, is it EMF? So you're exposed, you're, you're, you're right in line of, for a, of a cell tower, and that's giving you a headache? I mean, I've seen all of this, and we've seen all of this. So these are the kinds of things that aren't even looked at in regular medicine. But this, these are the things that we have to educate people about. And now depression, I'm going to address depression because the second leading cause of disability in the States, a lot of absenteeism due to depression, affects 9.9 .9 million American adults, women twice as much as men, and that's because of women's hormones. And hormones really do affect mood considerably. 5% uh, of the U.S. population of the age of 18 and older have some uh, are affected in some way with depression. And uh, as I said earlier, nearly one in four individuals will experience some degree of clinical depression or some sort of mood disorder in their lifetime. It could be short, it could be long, but everyone will have some um, one in four individual will experience it. And what are the risk factors? What, can, what tends to make people likelier to be depressed? First of all, a genetic predisposition. It can run in families. Uh, lifestyle factors, smoking, sed being sedentary, being overweight, having a high sugar and junk food diet. And what happens? You go to your doctor, and they, oh, you're, de you're a little depressed. Oh, okay, here, take, have some Prozac. There's, there's Zoloft, there's Celexa. And they don't take chemistry into account. And the, the really bad thing is that not only are these drugs full of side effects, but they also deplete, one of the side effects is that they actually deplete nutrients that you need to make your brain chemistry work. So it works against what we really need. We need folate, B vitamins, and CoQ10, and they actually deplete it. I wrote about that in a book called Supplement Your Prescription. So it's really, the, you know, the sad news about antidepressants is that if they work in a few people, they work in people that are seriously depressed, but for the most part, they're, it's basically a placebo effect, but it's a placebo with a lot of side effects. So uh, this is a study that was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. So the, the um, advice here is never take a pill that has more side effects than you have symptoms. <laughs> you know, you don't want to trade what you have for something worse, but then you can't get off of. And I spend a lot of um, patient hours helping people to get off of medication safely and comfortably because if they just go off it quickly it's not good never go off a drug or if you don't have anybody on the medication never go off quickly it's um it can have dangerous effects so we use natural ways of doing things we use lifestyle changes we use psychotherapy good psychotherapy like eft emdr tft anybody know about eft tapping and other these are energy psychologies they work really quickly you don't have to they do, you know, long psychoanalytic things like they used to do. Like, who has time for that, right? And then there's a meditation, neurofeedback, guided imagery. Lots of, lots of good things. Am I in the way of the slides for anybody? I'm good? Okay. Uh, and let me just see where I'm at. Okay. So what do we do naturally? Besides doing those methods, we want to balance the blood sugar. And we know a whole lot more now about balancing blood sugar than we ever did. And I'll, I'm going to cover that in a little more detail. We also supply, and this is what I do in my practice, I supply safe and effective alternatives to the antidepressants or the anti-anxiety agents using specific ingredients that help rebuild the brain. So we're treating the underlying cause. That's the whole deal. You treat the underlying cause, you don't treat the symptoms. Now, the brain is an organ. It's this three pound organ that's the consistency of jello, which means it's very delicate, which means it can be hurt easily. So when these guys are out on the football field, they're getting knocked, they're getting concussions, or the, the film concussion. It's about that. They're finally realizing like, wow, these old football players and old boxers um, are not doing so well because they've been, their heads have been knocked around a lot. So this little three pound organ uses 20% of the glucose, oxygen, and nutrients of the brain, of the body. And these neurons, the, nerve, the nerves in the brain, communicate uh, through neurotransmitters. 
And these neurotransmitters are made out of nutrients. And their individual, their, your individual biochemistry is going to determine how they are, how well that you are functioning in your brain. So what do we need? We need the right ingredients. It's like baking a cake. You're not going to bake a good cake if you don't have all the ingredients. Or it might, it might look okay, and you taste it like, yuck, you left out some of the main ingredients. So, so sometimes somebody looks okay, but they're not really. Or, um, you know, we don't know what's wrong with people until we really look under the hood, under the cover. And in, in some cases, what I'm doing is I'm doing laboratory testing to, um, to see what's going on. We look for specific deficiencies. Uh, the other thing is what's interesting is sometimes I don't have to look very far. If I can figure out somebody has an imbalance in their blood sugar uh, and start to just feed them properly. There's people have to feed themselves. I'm not going to feed them. <laughs> feed, them feed themselves properly, uh, regular meals, good food, solid, healthy food, and I'll explain in a little bit what that is. The symptoms start to go away. They start to get better. And, and the cravings for the bad food go away. So sometimes you don't have to tell people, cut out sugar, cut out alcohol, cut out caffeine. Rather than saying that, give them the good food and the bad stuff falls away. It really does. <clears throat> and there's some biochemical issues in, in, um, in depression too. Low thyroid. And I know you mentioned um, thyroid, <clears throat> that there's an epidemic of, of low thyroid, thyroiditis, thyroid cancer. Uh, so we, we take some measures. We measure TSH, T3, T4, uh, adrenal fatigue. And our adrenals are very, very taxed by stress. And that can lead to what looks like depression. So somebody goes to the doctor and they've been under a lot of stress. And their adrenals are very tired. They don't have a Prozac deficiency. They have an energy deficiency. They need to be bolstered up. They need certain foods, certain nutrients, certain herbs to build them up. They don't need a drug. The drug is just going to push them further into um, a place of depletion. There's a big problem with heavy metals, terrible problem with heavy metals. Mercury, lead, and cadmium in our environment, very serious. You know, we know about the lead in Flint, Michigan, contaminating the water. Well, that's brain damaging those children. This is so serious. So on and on, and we, have, we know we have an epidemic of mercury toxicity. We can't eat certain fish because they're full of mercury. So on and on, potassium deficiency is pretty common, so make sure you're eating enough um, fruits that contain potassium. B vitamin deficiency is a big, um, big issue, and B vitamins are needed to make your neurotransmitters. And vitamin D, you know, we don't get enough sunshine. We'll never get enough sunshine. You can't get enough sunshine to convert to vitamin D, and we're not converting D in our skin the way we used to. We're not as efficient at doing it for all the reasons that I'm mentioning here. So you actually do have to measure your D level and take supplemental vitamin D. And it doesn't have to be in a pill. It could be there could be some food sources, but often um, you you have to actually turn to the actual vitamin itself. So food allergies, inflammation, substance abuse is rampant, and that's affecting people's mood because when you're depleted from an addictive substance, you're depressed. And then you put on an antidepressant, and that doesn't really solve the problem. Uh, in fact, substance abuse is treated with medication. Uh, not a good idea. I, I wrote a book called The Addicted Brain and How to Break Free about how to use natural products to get off of addictive substances, and it's uh, a much healthier way to go. Now, I'm not against drugs, totally. I think there's a place for them, but I just think they're vastly overprescribed. So, you know, people have low levels of neurotransmitters for all kinds of reasons. We just need to figure out what they're low in and give it back to them. So what do we need to eat? First of all, let's start with food. Basic food. Carbs to provide glucose. Protein to provide the amino acids to make the brain chemistry. Smart fats like the omega-3s and coconut oil, which is an MCT medium chain triglyceride, antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, phospholipids, water. These are the basics that we need. And uh, so even, even if we were taking supplements, we're taking protein powders, whatever else we're taking, we need to start with a basis of really good, solid food. 
And I mentioned hypoglycemia. If you're eating the right way with the, those three food groups and the phospholipids and water, you should have a balanced blood sugar. If you don't, you might feel you might be feeling some of these things, and these are signs of hypoglycemia, means low blood sugar. And what happens ultimately, if you have low blood sugar over time, you end up getting diabetes, which is high blood sugar, because the whole system gets out of whack, which I will explain. Uh, and so, what are some of the symptoms of low blood sugar? I think some of you know, right? I mean, what, what do you think? Dizzy, lightheaded, tired. What's that? Foggy brain. Foggy brain, absolutely. Irritable, too. Irritable, cranky. I mean, I, I discovered that when <clears throat> my daughter was two, and she'd get cranky at times. And I, I said, oh, hypoglycemia, I didn't feed her. So I didn't get into it with her about, like, trying to reason with her, trying to, oh, well, who's boss here? There's nothing like that. The kid was low blood sugar. She didn't have a brain. And a two-year-old has a different kind of brain anyway. But you really have to understand that very often children, when they're being really unreasonable, they don't have their brain with them. Their brain isn't working. They, there's, no, there's no glucose fueling their brain. So you have to cut them some slack. So these are all the, the um, symptoms of low blood sugar. I actually talk about this in my Eight Weeks to Vibrant Health book and also in the addicted brain and how to break free. So what do we do? How, what's, what's the issue with blood sugar? Um, we get low blood sugar and then we, what do we do? We eat something that has high blood sugar, that has high sugar to make us feel better. And what happens is we eat that and then the insulin, I'll show you a diagram here, this is, this is cool. Um, I don't have a pointer, but um, let me let me see if I can get over here. Yeah, just bring that around. over around. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. We have high blood sugar, which stimulates the pancreas to secrete insulin. So this, here comes the insulin. Grabs the high blood glucose and takes it and moves it into the cell to produce energy, or it's stored as fat. What happens, though, is then you get low blood sugar because all this, there's this big rush, and it goes, and it sometimes just overshoots the mark, and then you end up being kind of low blood sugar all over again. So it's kind of a vicious cycle. So you then go and eat something sweet, and you go through the whole cycle over and over again. You, you eat some sugar, and the whole cycle goes over. And then some people live like that. You know, they go from, from, from coffee to candy bars. And that's how they get through their day. But that's not really taking care of themselves. So I'm going to, this is, this is a little technical, and you don't have to memorize this. You don't have to know how to spell it. But I just want you to know that we have different brain chemicals that do different things. We're like different departments. So there's the dopamine. That's the energizing and motivating one. And when you're low in that, you have trouble getting it together. Kids that are ADD are low in dopamine. Noradrenaline is what you need to feel good and feel happy. Adrenaline is the stress response. You get an adrenaline rush. It's when you, you, step, you step down on the curb and all of a sudden a car is coming, you jump back. That's the stress response. That's the adrenaline response. Serotonin. We know about serotonin from the SSRI. So serotonin is a nice calming neurotransmitter. It makes you feel calm and happy. Endorphins. You know about endorphin highs? Runner's high. That's an endorphin. It's a high feeling. GABA is the kinds of calms you down, chills you out. It's the chill factor. And then acetylcholine, very important that as we get older, acetylcholine goes down. That's the memory molecule. So just remember we have different molecules to wake us up, put us to sleep, and help us to remember what we're doing. And they all work in a nice little orchestra. And when they're out of balance, you have symptoms. You have depression, you have anxiety, you have ADD, lack of memory, and so on. So what do we have to do to get this back going again? We need sunlight, exercise, 
a good low glycemic diet that is not a high sugar diet. We need to reduce our stress. We need to bring in the cofactors to make those neurotransmitters, like baking a cake, you want to make a nice neurotransmitter, you have to have the raw material. So you need to extra B vitamins, B3, B6, folate, C, zinc, magnesium. All of these go into making the neurotransmitters. And we need methyl nutrients. This is getting a little more technical. Uh, and we need omega-3s. All of these help to make neurotransmitters and balance and balance our brain. Uh, and here's a little diagram. Again, it's really not, not to memorize it, but just to show you the interaction, um, how things work in a, it's chemistry. Can I do it on? Yeah, look, at, look at how you can put your finger on the finger. And okay. Yeah, see? Got it. Like Use the pointer. Okay. So here we eat some protein, and then it turns into phenylalanine, but it needs the help of B6 and zinc. So you have to make sure you have B6 and zinc in your diet. The phenylalanine turns into tyrosine, and it needs folic acid, magnesium, manganese, iron, copper, and so on. So I'm, what I'm saying is each step, it's a chemical step, very sophisticated chemistry. For each step, we need certain cofactors. So we said when we say we need, you need vitamins and minerals, that's what we need them for. So in case you were wondering why you need vitamins and minerals, that's why. So you start with protein that you eat, and you end up with dopamine. That's the motivating neurotransmitter. Noradrenaline makes you feel good and up. Adrenaline is the fight or flight one, and then that's the dopamine pathway. So con the conventional treatment, by the way, so this is, this is how you get dopamine, and that's the, the motivating good feeling. When you're not feeling good, you're feeling anxious, and you go to your doctor and you say, oh, I'm feeling nervous, I'm not feeling good, um, jumpy and irritable and I have trouble sleeping, what happens? You get put on drugs. You get put on Xanax, Valium, Dalmain for sleep, Ativan, which, by the way, also makes you sleepwalk. Halcyon really makes you sleepwalk. They took that off the market. And what happens is people get tolerant to these things. They become addictive. They can't get off of them. And this is, again, a lot of the, what I see in my practice is people have been put on these medications. Maybe they were in the hospital. Maybe they were sick. Maybe they just came in and said, look, I'm really stressed. I'm going through a rough time. They were put on them. They can't get off them. And they stop working. And by the way, they do stop working after a while. You have to keep escalating the dose. And then you're in trouble. So what I say to people, if you need to be on something, and sometimes you do, um, per preferably I, I use herbal products and they work fine, or amino acids. But let's say you're on something. Stay on it the shortest time possible, maximum two weeks. Otherwise, you develop tolerance, and it's a really slippery slope. It may seem like a good idea at the time, but there are, such, there are consequences. Um, and I keep talking about the B vitamins. So what are the B vitamins? The B vitamins are absolutely essential for making the neurotransmitters work. And without them, you're irritable, depressed, you can't think straight. And where do they come from? Whole grains and vegetables. And a lot of the herbal products that are grown in the earth and that's what some of the things we're talking about here. Uh, vitamin D, I mentioned earlier that we cannot really get it from the sun the way we ought to. And we must have it for memory, for bone health, for weight loss, and for cancer, for cancer prevention. We have to have vitamin D. And let me tell you, I have patients whose levels are like 20 and 30, uh, measured in nanograms per milli milli milliliter, nanograms per milliliter. So... I'm seeing the 20s and 30s. I want to see between 60 and 80. Uh, so it says, you know, you get your thing back from Lab Corp Quest, and it says that the, the range is 30 to 60. No, it's 60 to 80. And um, I have most of my people on 5,000 I use daily. So just to know, vitamin D is really important. Um, now I'm going to talk about Alzheimer's, because we're all heading toward age. Our age is, you know, inevitable. Aging is inevitable, but getting really old and getting Alzheimer's may not be inevitable if we know what, what to do. So 3 in 10 of people over 70 have impaired memory, 
and 80% of them will develop dementia within five years. There's 25 million people currently, actually it's a higher number than that, that have Alzheimer's, and by 2050, over 100 million have Alzheimer's. Can you imagine the cost that's gonna to be to society? And only one in 100 cases are caused by genes. Get it, it's not your genes, it's your epigenetics, it's what you do with your genes. And probably 99 out of 100 cases are preventable. We just need to know how. It's the sixth leading cause of death in the US, fifth leading cause of death for those age 65 and older. So remember you heard it here. Yeah. And so what, what, do you, what are the signs? We've seen it, we've seen it in people around it, maybe unfortunately with elderly relatives. Poor dream right recall, well, they're not gonna tell you they don't remember their dreams, but if it's you, you know you don't remember your dreams. Dry mouth, poor mouth, memory, forgetfulness, mental exhaustion, difficulty, concentrating, and um, what I had said earlier about, you know, you don't remember somebody's name, you don't remember um, where you put your keys, and I don't remember what else. <laughs> anyway, that's what happens when you get old. So what can we do? We can actually do something about it. And these are some of the mind-enhancing nutrients that I love. Phosphatidylcholine, citicholine, and DMAE help to make acetylcholine, which is the memory and concentration neurotransmitter. So we can actually make the raw materials to make our brains work better. Huperzine A, which inhibits acetylcholine esterase. That's a good word, you need to spell that. The enzyme which breaks down acetylcholine, so it makes you have more acetylcholine hanging around. Phosphatidylserine, it's a, a fat that's essential for the membranes, the brain membrane, to, brain cell membranes to work. And Ginkgo, a lot of us have heard of Ginkgo, right? So Ginkgo is really good for brain blood flow, and Vimposatine is also really important for brain blood flow. So when we give this nutritional support, what we notice is people have reduced anxiety, better mood, their memory is improved, they have better mental performance, better attention, better learning, and all of these, these and more, and I'll give you another list of natural products to take that will prevent your brain from deteriorating. Um, first of all, you need, to, you need to have your base basic. You can't just take one product and say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm covered. No, you have to stay actively, active socially, physically, mentally, be outdoors if you can, keep mentally active, avoid the bad stuff, avoid the sugar, the alcohol, the caffeine, keep your stress level in check. Stress really kills brain cells. Have essential fatty acids like EPA or seed oils and algae. Take your supplements daily. Um, the, and the omega-3 is really important. Mind, mood, and memory booster for actually very good for ADD, for depression and bipolar. Also really, really good for Alzheimer's and Alzheimer's prevention because it builds brain cells and it affects neurotransmitter balance. Dose usually is 1,000 to 3,000 milligrams daily as a fish oil supplement or eat fatty fish three times a week or if you're vegan, flax oil and DHA from algae. Also coconut oil, there's tons of research now and there's one really interesting study that's come out, very, very useful. The um, medium, ch medium chain triglycerides, that's what coconut oil is. For a long time people thought it was like a bad saturated fat, like, oh, don't eat it. But finally, it's getting the respect that it's due. And there is, um, there's an article that, that you, we, can, we can get here. Um, I think you have it, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, actually, there's a lot of information available. Like I could spend a whole lecture time on coconut oil. All I can tell you is eat one to three teaspoons a day, maybe more. Use it in cooking. You can't put it in your salad because it's solid at room temperature. So um, very, very useful. It's a fuel. It's a fuel for the brain instead of glucose. It, it um, creates ketones, and ketones are an alternative fuel for the brain and actually very useful in some of the brain diseases like Parkinson's, ALS, MS, and so on and actually some very rare um, brain diseases, that um, degenerative diseases. 
So, um, and Katie had shown me a really good article that was a, a good review article on coconut oil that I thought was really impressive. So, just know that food is information. Food is nice, we like eating food, right? But it's also information. I mean, nature was really smart and made food tempting and yummy. So we eat it because we need it in order to survive. So the food actually can turn the genes on and off. The right foods turn on the right genes. The wrong foods turn on the bad genes, like the cancer genes. So you really want to eat a healthy, natural, fresh diet. You want to have good genes for health and longevity. You want, don't want to eat the bad stuff, like the sucrose and the high fructose corn syrup. Terrible stuff. Causes food addiction and obesity and diabetes. Bad stuff. So eat a good diet, nutrient-rich, well-balanced, uh, so that your body knows it can burn fat and hold on to lean muscle. I mean, you really have to give your body the right messages, and we do the message, we give the message through what we eat. Uh, there's also the gut-brain connection. And again, I'm not going to devote a lot of time here, but we're discovering more and more how very closely the brain and the gut are connected. So when you have brain, when you have gut inflammation, you can have brain inflammation. It's just how it works. And the connection is through, get this, through the probiotics, through the healthy, the microbiome, the healthy bacteria, the friendly bacteria in our gut, they actually affect our brain. It goes travel through the, the impulse from these bugs that live inside us, and by the way, have 99% of our DNA is really bug DNA, bacterial DNA. This is a whole other story. I'm not even going to get into it here. <laughs> but the digestive system, these microbiome, this microbiome, these these bacteria are extremely, extremely important. They can make us happy. They can make us anxious. They can make us fat. They can make us skinny just by having the right balance of bugs. And the way you have the right balance of bugs is by eating the right foods. And when that's happening, then your brain gets healthier. So let me just show you the rest of this particular slide. 90% of the cells in the body are bacteria. I think it's really, it's closer to 99%. Oh, nine, yeah, of the cells. 90, 99% of the DNA in our body is bacterial. The vagus nerve connects the gut to the brain. And we have two nervous systems. There's the central nervous system, the brain and spinal cord, the one that tells us to move and walk and throw balls. And the enteric system, the second brain, which is the gut-brain connection, and that's the one that's the more automatic nervous system, the autonomic nervous system that, that governs digestion and brain function. So you don't, this again, this is a diagram that you don't have to memorize, but just know that the gut and the brain are very, very connected. The gut is the second brain. It might even be the first brain. Very important. It's getting a lot more respect than it used to. So you must heal the gut. You can't use what you can't digest and absorb. You need healthy gut flora with probiotics and prebiotics. You can't just take the probiotics. You have to have the fiber and the cultured vegetables to feed those friendly bacteria. We have to be good hosts to them and not feed the McDonald's. And we have this real epidemic of leaky gut, which means that the, the gut wall is not intact and it's not absorbing and digesting properly. We have to take the bad stuff out. We have to take out the food allergies. We have to take out the GMOs. And um, the Simply Young products certainly address this. They're, not, they're non GMO, non allergenic, and help to, and have ingredients that help to heal the gut. Um, and so some of the ingredients, and many, many ingredients, because when, you, when you're dealing with natural products, you don't have like a single thing and that's, you know, that's the magic. The magic is in the synergy of all the different ingredients, and you have to choose them carefully. And I have to say Katie's been really wonderful in choosing the, in the ingredients that go together, and it's really a work in progress too, and I've had some input as well, and we're really creating something that's going to be, that is already very healing to the gut and the brain. And when you're healing the gut, you're healing the brain. Just That's just what happens. Blueberries, we know proanthocyanidins eat a pint of blueberries a day, and that'll really, really help your brain function really well. 
lecithin, phosphatidylserine, phos um, phosphatidylcholine, I mentioned that already. These are the natural fats that coat the brain cell. Very necessary. Curcumin, excellent, excellent anti-inflammatory for the brain and the gut. And we know that in, in India, where they eat a lot of curcumin, a lot of curry, that's what curcumin's curry, they have a much lower incidence of Alzheimer's disease. Did you know that? So curcumin, eat curcumin until you're yellow. Dandelion root, who would have thought that humble dandelion is so good for you. Ginkgo, as we know, it helps brain circulation and circulation throughout the whole body. Uh, brown rice extract, there's so much research on brown rice extract. Um, it does many, many things. Go to cola. Um, it was actually called a sacred herb in parts of India in Ayurvedic medicine because it, it does um, many, many things, including actually helping people in being transcendent. But I don't know if you even knew that. But I, when I, I was doing some reading about go to cola and um, very, very good for keeping the brain young. But it also has this other kind of a spiritual aspect to it, energetic aspect. And you want to have these nutrients in their natural form, as close to nature as possible, because they still have the energy of nature in them. And, and all the, the ingredients of the plant, because when you take an extract out of a plant, you may be concentrating what's thought to be the important um, part of it, but you don't want to leave out the rest of it. So the truth is that you want you want to have you want to maybe, maybe um, concentrate some of the more important ingredients, but you also want to have the whole plant present for all the um, synergistic ingredients that go with it, and then all these different herbal products go together synergistically as well with each other. So each one in itself is a wonderful healing um, being almost, and then. Um, mixing with all the other herbs, they have this wonderful synergy. They work, they work well together. So really what we want to do, I want to just summarize some principles that I'm working with. One is uh, address the underlying medical condition, always under, looking under the hood. Look what's going on. Don't just treat the symptoms. Look at hormones, blood sugar, heavy metals, gut issues. Look for a common cause of multiple symptoms. I had one woman who had... Um, rapid heart rate, rate, and she was feeling dizzy and had muscle cramps. Well, guess what? She was low in magnesium. You know, simple, common cause. She could have gone to a cardiologist for one thing, a joint person for another thing, and the truth is she needed magnesium. Okay? And that's very, it's a very common deficiency. And I, I just really can't emphasize it enough. So look for what's, look for what's missing and replace what's missing and do it naturally uh, as much as possible. Give the, give the body what it needs and it will really respond beautifully. Even if you've neglected your body for a long time, um, older people who have neglected the body still, when they start to exercise and eat properly, amazing things happen. They really can turn around and I'm sure you, you've seen that yourselves. So you start with a healthy diet, you eliminate the bad stuff. I don't have to tell you guys that. Eliminate smoking, drug, drug use, Minimize sugar, caffeine, and alcohol consumption. I mean, really, got to get rid of the bad stuff. You need enough sleep, seven to eight hours for most people. Get some good, vigorous exercise five times a week for 30 minutes. That gets you moving, oxygenated, and sweating. Uh, address psychological and spiritual aspects. I mean, we are mind, body, and spirit. So take care of your spirit and your psyche and your emotional needs, your social needs, your community needs, your needs to give. So your needs to take, your needs to be hugged. Yesterday was National Hug Day. So you want to hug and be hugged, you want to love and be loved, and you want to take care of people and be taken care of. Uh, then there's yoga, tai chi, music, meditation, aromatherapy. I, I devoted about a third of the Natural Highs book to all of these activities with the research that went, went with them. So... Um, on that note, I know I covered a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff, but I wanted this to be an overview of the brain just to get you interested, get you excited, and you can look up a lot of this stuff. Um, there's also, uh, I have written a number of books, and some of them are available here tonight. Others are available online. The Addicted Brain and How to Break Free is here, and Eight Weeks to Vibrant Health is here. 
and uh, natural highs is strictly on the brain. Eight weeks of vitamin health is the whole body and the brain. Supplement your prescription is about drug nutrient depletion. So if anybody's been on a medication, they've been depleted of certain nutrients. You have to feed them back in. And the addicted brain and how to break free is how to get off of medications and substances of abuse and even food, which is a substance of abuse, using natural supplements. And I also have a free e-report called Reclaim Your Brain. And it, it's covering a lot of what we talked about tonight because I didn't expect you to remember it. I mean, you can remember some of it. I wanted you to be inspired, um, but you didn't have to memorize it. However, in Reclaim Your Brain, a lot of it is recapped. So um, that'll give you something to look at, and it'll tell you how to spell all, this, all those good words that I said. So go to my website, cassmd.com, C-A-S-S-M-D.com. Do that first thing when you get home or before on your phone. Go to cassmd.com, and right there, there's an opt-in box. You put your name, your email, and then you get Reclaim Your Brain. And then you get my newsletter list, which is cool. And I think that maybe, yeah, that was... Any questions? Um, the last slide. Let me put it back up. Yeah, I will be open for questions. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, it, what brings to mind for me with the information you're sharing is an epidemic sort of a socioeconomic injustice in the way that we help it. Because when I think of how much it actually takes to stay healthy, even on a basic level, and then in certain neighborhoods, you're not even having real food at our grocery store, food that's not, that is it's all GMO. Yeah, the, um, how does, people how does, in poorer neighborhoods, what you're saying people in poorer neighborhoods don't have the advantages. And there's been a movement, for example, it's going to the schools and have gardens in those schools. I think that's really, that's the place to start, really, really. And there are some, some, some supermarkets that have gone in to the poorer neighborhoods with organic food. So there is a movement to do that. But of course, it, it has been an economic issue. And um, for people in, in, in poorer neighborhoods, they have to really travel, which they can't afford to do, to get good food. But there's always nature in growing your own. And I think that's kind of, and there are community gardens, more and more community gardens. And I think what we have to do is emphasize that sort of thing. Because the whole, I mean, the, the economy is, let's, let's make money off addictive food and drugs. You know, illegal drugs, legal drugs, prescription drugs. You know, it's all the same thing. It's making money for the few wealthy people. Corporate interests. We could get political here, couldn't we? Oh. Yes. Okay. Thank you for just for bringing thank that up. In India, yeah, in curcumin, in India, where they curcumin. So I um, curry. I recently. Uh, well, I want to share something with you on curcumin, but I recently was at the San Monica Pharmacy, mm -hmm. and this woman in her eighties, a German started talking on the phone class and she was saying that her husband was like a medical insurance researcher or something like that for like his whole entire life, like 40, 45 years. And apparently people that have died of Alzheimer's, they were doing autopsies on them and finding mad cow disease. And they had to stop doing autopsies on people all the time because they were having to throw out the equipment because it could be killed in auto. There is so much of it, and in India, they don't eat meat. That's a very good point. So I'm just wondering if you've done any That is a very, very good point about mad cow disease being the source of Alzheimer's and because they don't eat cows in India. That's a very interesting point. They honor the cow, actually. A cow probably doesn't have a mad cow there. So, yeah. I mean, because meat is a huge part of the industry, and obviously, it's probably not really known how much. That's a really good point. Good point. Well, why don't you research and get back to me? I will. Yeah, Thank you. Uh, I don't know. But I'd love to know. Um, one thing we didn't bring up was vaccinations. Oh. 
Oh yeah, so that that's usually when, when a child has autism, it's kind of like a perfect storm. It's a combination of vaccination, maybe with mercury in it, maybe the, the assault on the immune, an immature immune system, uh, a genetic predisposition that doesn't clear out metals very well. So, you know, similar children can have, you know, kids in the same family can have vaccines and one will become autistic and one won't. Twins, uh, I've seen incidents of twins where one, the, the kids were vaccinated, but one was ill during the vaccination and that child became autistic. So, so it's, it's, a, it's a very sad, sad story. If anyone wants to know a lot more about autism, there was an excellent telesummit that just came. I'm, I'm, I'm a real fan of telesummits. Anybody here watch them? And I just, they're fabulous. Um, they, because you get all these experts together, and it's kind of like any university course on something. You get the latest experts, and the real cutting edge ones, not the traditional people. Really telling you, these are researchers. There's like smart people, they're often academics, and I really learn a lot. So it was just one on autism. So you can ask me about it when, when we're done. Magnesium dose a day. Uh, it's good to get it. It's good to get it in, in your food, in your leafy greens. Um, but if you're not, if you're going to be um, supplementing, um, about 600 milligrams daily. Mag, mag glycinate, mag, magnesium malate, not magnesium oxide because that's not well absorbed. You get mixtures of magnesium glyc glycinate and malate and some of the other chelates. Um, Katie, what would you say about magnesium? Sources um, of magnesium. I'm just a really big proponent of getting some food. The thing is, it's a difference. Like your milligrams are a lot less when you figure it out from a food. Just like, like for, a good example is vitamin C. You know, they say 60 milligrams is our RDA of, of vitamin C. If you were to equate that to the synthetic vitamin C, the ascorbic acid, that's like, what's 14,000 milligrams, that's 14 grams of that. So, you know, and same thing with like calcium, you know, 100 milligrams of a whole plant food calcium is equivalent to like uh, 900 milligrams of a synthetic. So, you know, so I, if I'm working with the, we're looking at, you could go anywhere from like 100 and like around 150 milligrams from real food and be feeling amazing. like. Like when I like I was taking the mag tablet, I didn't, I didn't have it, and I and I got we got it in, and I went to do yoga, and everything opened up. My hips started moving. I could never get my hips on the floor, and this and that, and everything started opening up. And I'm like, man, I've had such a long-standing magnesium deficiency, and I just took four of these tablets. I mean, seriously, and this is what's happening. So it's totally different when it comes from food. It's just so much. You know, if you only need six and a half milligrams of a whole food vitamin C to stop fulminant scurvy where the vascular, the veins and arteries are popping. So how powerful is that? To think about that, you know? Well, it is you really know what I'm saying? Vast working the supplements are amazing. Like when I Seriously. Within an hour, like what I find is taking the pure body protein and it's within an hour Seriously. my brain. Is just like, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. So well, that's how a lot of natural B vitamins, the vital flow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the vital flow is really rich in natural B vitamins because of all the greens and that stuff. So it's just and 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 magnesium too. So okay, so you might want to talk about your um, and I'll stay after a little bit for some more questions. Can I can I we get into um, headaches? Yes, because that's a bit very big problem with brains. And we I, like my son, I do see him. You know, he's got Lyme and uh, he's got the genetic um, thalassemia major. To, you know, and so he gets headaches a lot and everything. And he's, you know, a great kid. He doesn't, you know, I think he's doing any kind of drugs or anything. No, <laughs> but I don't know. I know he's a really good academic kid. So, but, so it's probably a stress thing, probably for him. But I know that there are other people here, maybe who has any issues with the brain, like headaches and things like that. Maybe you want to share or something. And, well, my, my brain headaches are a category in, in themselves, and I have to do with has to do with allergy. Could be magnesium deficiencies. It, it, again, it's not there's not one cause. 
What are some of the causes? Some of the causes magnesium deficiency. I've had some people just when they started going magnesium, their migraines cleared up. Other people, it's allergens. So when they drop, say, gluten or dairy or <coughs> some food that they're allergic to. It, other people, it's environmental. It's the um, EMFs. It could be cell phones, Wi-Fi's, that gives the migraines. Uh, and they have to live kind of away from those things and be protected. So it, it's, a, it's a more complex thing than just saying, like, what is the cause? Or what's the cause of any headache? Um, you really have to look at, well, what's going on? Is it, is it congestion? Um, is it sinuses? Is it um, vascular problems in the brain? Um, is it a, a chiropractic thing and you need a neck adjustment? And so on. So it's... Um, Many, so, many factors. Yeah. I had a pet rooster that I raised for a year. He was very tame with me. You know. And if I came into the room, you know, I get bathroom for the Amazon bathroom. <laughs> and if I came in with my cell phone, he would attack it. Really? Completely freaked out. And my little flip phone, I don't even have an iPhone. Just, and he would just get completely upset and enraged. I just wanted to share that. Wow. Anyone's ever heard about that. So you rooster <laughs> would. Get upset with this stuff. Wow. <laughs> That's really what, because what of her what I'm saying? Uh huh. I don't. That that's an individual issue. I don't know. Yeah, I don't have it. I, I just wondered if there was another thing besides coconut oil. I'd I'd have to know her situation. It's a little more medical than we can deal with here. So. I don't know if you can address this, but um, I have a toddler who has migraines and she's and have a hard time getting to make sure that they're healthy. Is there anything <laughs> else that you recommend for toddlers? Yeah, smoothies, you probably have some good ideas. Oh my gosh, I think pretty much everything we have is really great for <laughs> it's delicious right. from toddlers to adults, really. You know, when I first created my first greens, I created it for my son because of our genetic blood disorder and our and he had brain tumor and you know, a lot of serious challenges and stuff. And they said that he would live to the age of two years old. He would he would die just from the blood transfusions alone. And because of just the creating those greens, he didn't have one blood transfusion at all. And he and you know, we were able to really um, deal on every level with nutrition, you know. And, and then we use magnetic fields to see that we both had tumors and we use that. And I'm not saying that, I'm not making a claim that we could break tumors down, but we, we were able to, to clean them out with doing that. So it was pretty amazing. So, I, you know, I think everything that we have here is, is um, people friendly. It is, it is the life blood, you know, seriously. Mm -hmm. Hi, how much um, are your books? We have some in back here that wants to buy. Oh, the, oh great. The price is marked on the back. Oh, okay. And then check your credit card or what? what does that a check or a credit card, whatever. Yeah. Or cash. <laughs> and cash is easier because then we don't have to deal with the whatever. Taxes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I was thinking about taxes. I was just thinking about the paperwork between yes. us. Yeah. yeah, I hadn't thought about that. Right. I just found out this morning that heat moss actually is a barrier against a lot of EMS. They actually make clothing with it in it, and a lot of people wear so scarves. They have, they have actually computer bibs, which are like look like clothing. You can go on and find them that you can actually wear them to help protect yourself against a lot of environmental okay. Yeah, there, there's some websites. I don't remember yeah. what they are, but there are some. Or less, less EMF is one of them. Less EMF. And you, um, 
I think there's also a silver, there's a silver mesh you can put around your bed at night. There's silver, there's a me, there's certain paints that you can paint the interior of your home to keep it from coming in, but then you have to make sure. Also, if you're using Wi-Fi in your house, you're probably better off doing things that are plugged in, you know, Ethernet rather than um, a Wi-Fi. But if you do, you should turn it off at night. Do, do those little, I've seen these slippers you can, like, I have no, yeah, I can't comment on them. I mean, people swear by the different stickers. And there are people who have an environmental illness that when they use a particular sticker in free trip, they're always different. They say, the sticker, you know, it's the only thing that works when I, you know, when I use so it. They can show, like, the brain chemistry, too. They've shown studies on them. And it seems like somehow they must be reliable because, it's, you know, they, they have legitimate studies on it, showing how but the, the brain... They, 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 they're not that legitimate, that's the problem. Oh, they're not that, that legitimate. Not, I don't know. That. Yeah, yeah. It's the, these are so multi-level, and they are... Oh, yeah, here's the picture. Like, yeah. I don't know. So, you know, they could be good. So, uh, I what is my, it? You know, the little tabs for the EMFs? No, I'm saying this is the one that has the picture of the... Um, that was one of them that was like a number of years ago. They had the picture of the brain protected and not protected, but I never believed the picture because I didn't really see the study that it came from. So I just thought it was like, well, that's a, if it's true, it's great. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was told if I put my phone on, on um, airplane mode at night and I don't put it near my head, I take it off the floor. Oh, yeah, don't have your phone anywhere near you at night. Yeah, yeah. Six, six, seven, six feet away. Six yeah, and airplane mode. And airplane mode is, it should be on airplane mode. Right? Yeah. 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 Regarding HM, HM poster, I don't know. GM posters. Um, how many more years are they going to, is it, have enough years passed where it's, it's 100% or 99% clear that this is, this is. Monsanto has money. a lot of money. No, no, right, but I'm just saying medically, if... Well, we know that now. I mean, like, no, so enough research has... Well, it, it was really... We we have all kinds of research on, on cancer, the cancer in animals that have eaten GMO food. I'm going to stop here. And I just I want to make a little more comment on that. Okay. And then I'll, I'll hang around for another little while, but I also have to be going. I have to be Okay, any other questions real quick? Because we don't want to lose her. It, she's amazing, isn't she? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So amazing. Really, thank you. Um, I just want to say a little bit on the, the GMOs and stuff. The power of what's going on with GMOs. I spent an entire year putting together two videos about labeling GMOs and everything. I brought in, you know, I'm known as a nutritionist to the stars. I brought in as many Hollywood people as I could because I'm thinking, Surely people will listen to Tia Carrera, Muriel Hemingway, Dr. McCola, you know, uh, Mike Adams, if you know Mike Adams, Kathleen Quinlan, and all these different people, you know, Dick Van Dyke, who would not listen to him? Mary Poppins, you know, I mean, seriously, who wouldn't listen to him? And so I'm thinking, this is just a great strategy because these people will tell the truth about what's going on. We created a great, two great videos um, on YouTube, Who's Pissed About GMOs, and then there's another one there. And honestly, like the two weeks before, they kept saying, you might get hacked, whatever, you know. And two weeks before, we couldn't get it out. It was like a two and a half weeks out of the vote. They, would, they hacked my system at my house. We couldn't get it out. And it, was, it took us until four days before the vote, before they, they would let it out. And let me tell you, Dr. McCullough, do you know, anybody know Dr. McCullough? He's got the largest health website in the entire world, he puts it out. Mike Adams, if you know him, the health ranger, he puts it out. These are two of the biggest health websites in the entire world, and the, the, these they still haven't gotten over like 4,000 hits on it because that's how they can control it. And so I said, okay, because I, I, I couldn't sleep at night. I would write songs about you know the GMOs and things like that. It was like insane. And I get my daughter to see them, and it was perfect, you know. But it, it obviously that's not going to work if you can't get it out there. And I said, okay, well, I'm just going to go and try to heal what they're doing to people, and try to educate people through one of the biggest, um, 
most lucrative types of businesses since they're disabling everybody anyways, you know? And so I said, okay, I'll create a company that could do that. And that's what Simply Young is. So it's really interesting that we just end on that note. Um, and I really wanna thank you all for coming. This was really great. We really look forward, yes, thank you. We really look forward to having uh, even more amazing speakers on the different topics that are so crucial right now, definitely. So thank you. Bless you guys. Thank you. <laughs>